Hey guys, welcome back to Independent Auto, offering you independent reviews, independent from bias. And today, we're about to talk about a car that's been all around this country, and you've seen it in every nook and cranny of this country. And it's a beautiful thing, and I'll tell you why in a bit. But this car is the third generation, and this specific car is a Toyota Vios 2014 1.3e automatic variant. Now, the funny thing about this generation, and all the generations, is they have some sort of resemblance to DC movies for some reason, they're calling it that. So now, we have DC Comics as well. So the first generation was the Robin. Second generation is Batman. This right here, third generation, is known as the Superman. And the last generation, which is the latest model, the fourth generation, is known as the Joker. So I have Superman with me, and I'm Batman. Oh, I'm Batman. right here and uh well seems like we got the justice league in order so let's get into this video guys we'll talk about all the features of the car the little aspects here and there the little small things to look at the big things to look at and is this car really for you Alrighty, let's get on to this. What makes this car tick? Now right here, we have a 1.3 liter engine, also known as a 1,299cc engine, which if it was in a motorcycle, you'd be flying. But in this car, it's a completely different story. It's an A to B car. It gets the job done. And this engine is extremely reliable as we know Toyota to always be. Now this specific car is a four speed automatic transmission that has 86 horsepower and has 122 newton meters of torque at 4,400 RPM. Now, as you can see over here, it says VVTi. Now, this car is a single VVTi, not taken, sorry. It's single, but it has much to offer. Now, if you look at the 2016 model, if you move yourself to the future to that model, they have a dual VVTi. It's taken now. It takes two years, it takes time to find relationships, you know. So point is, this single VVTi offers you interesting features and it is straight to the point. While the dual, we can get to that later on. So this one right here offers you, that's, that's it, that's all I had to say actually. Yeah. I'm single. <laughs> all right, anyways, let's go to the back now. Now the back is straight to the point. We can see the beautiful Toyota logo that's been there for generations, an iconic design. Over here, we see the E, which for some reason, a lot of car people like to use the alphabets. I think, um, you know, we're, we're, we need to remember our ABCs every day. And of course, slap it here, the Vios logo has to be there because this car is so well known that some people even remove the logo and they're just like, oh yeah, it's a Vios on the road. You know? We already know it. Let's move on to the boot. The boot is spacious. Now, I can't fit inside it. We can't have a picnic in it but it definitely can fit a bunch of bags. Right now we have two lightsabers in it. Wrong theme, I know it's Superman, but I'd say easily if you're trying to travel or go to an outside trip, let's say out of town to the province or anything, easily this car will be able to handle your load. However, with the powertrain and the way it's gonna pull the vehicle on mountains, especially if you have four people sitting in this sedan, then we have some cause for concern. I would say it really depends on where you're going. If you're going to hilly places like say Baguio or something, and you know there are very steep roads up there, we might have to consider another variant or another car for that purpose. But this will definitely do the job with the amount of trunk space that it has. <laughs> Alrighty, now we're gonna talk about the rims. These bad boys are 15. That's it, they're 15. And the tires are 185, 60 R15s. So this does the job, and the kind of braking system this has in front is specifically disc brakes. That's a disc brake configuration, while the guy back here is drum brakes. As we move forward to this portion over here, one of my favorite portions, this little protruding plastic 
this does such a good job when it comes to managing wind noise while driving on the highway at high speeds, which I personally think is fantastic. Little do people know that this little, little thing causes and plays a huge role in the car. Small things matters, guys, even if he's single. VVTI, right? Yeah. So as you move over here to the door handles, there's not much chrome that you can see on this side over here. It's the same color as the car. Even the side mirror is the same color as the car. And that's the whole side of the Toyota Vios. Now, now we're talking about the interior. This interior is an interior. That's all I'll say. Because if you look at the speedometer, it's a printed speedometer. Um, there's no uh, protruding parts. It's not um, embossed or anything. Um, the arrows are, of course, the ones that are protruding. Uh, arrow pointers to the gauge clusters and everything. It's straight to the point. It has different modes and functions. It has your odometer, which uh, gives you your total mileage that you have. Uh, trip A, trip B, and back to odometer. And of course, it has a time which um, I think the time is placed in an odd place because if people are sitting in the back, they won't really know what time it is. So I think it would be nice if they put the time in this area over here. Now, with regards to the infotainment system, which is not really that high end for this generation, the newer ones have a screen, this one doesn't. Um, straight to the point, you basically have your power, volume, and all those aspects, you have different modes. There's no Bluetooth connectivity, but you do have USB connectivity and also auxiliary connectivity and a CD, which, um, we don't have CDs anymore, right? Bro, do you have a CD? No. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so we can't test the CD, I'm sorry, but I'm sure it works. Um, the air conditioning, though, for this car... CD, though. Oh, you do? CDs. Now, let's look at the air conditioning system. The air conditioning is fantastic. Even when this thermostat is at low, the air condition is just so cold, and that's something I really like about this car. There's no issues when it comes to aircon. However, when you're sitting in the back, that's where some cause for concern would come because then you'd have to angle your air conditioning vents to the back so that your passengers in the back can also feel the air conditioning as well. Now um, we look at the gear shifts over here. It's got a silver accent to it, just like the silver accents here on the side and the silver accents here as well, matching the silver accents here. I know I said silver accents a lot. No, this is not a Hyundai accent. But this gear shifter over here is also straight to the point with this 1.3 liter automatic transmission. It has your park reverse neutral, drive, third transmission, second, and L, which is low, low gear, when you're trying to overtake, or let's say you're going up a mountain, which I don't know if this car will be able to handle. And straight to the point, handbrake that you have over here. Now, as we move over to one of my favorite things about this car is the cup holders. You just have to pull it out, pull this out, and you just place your item in there, easy. And it's so, balanced it's well balanced that i think it's so much easier when you're driving to just pick up something here and sip on it and it's hitting the aircon vent directly so if you're having a cold beverage it's a cooler but if you're having a hot beverage then it's not a warmer obviously but with regards to compartments now we have ample enough compartments we have this guy over here where you can store your documents and goods we have this one over here as well and the side compartments which um is more than that more than enough more than what you would actually need with um, depending on how many things you're bringing with you, of course. Now let's talk about the buttons that are around this car. It's Superman buttons. We got automatic windows. One self-automatic on the drivers and everything else is just typical automatic buttons. We have the lock of the car. We need that. And we have the window locks as well so that your kids in the back don't play with the windows. But something I think that they could have adjusted is the side mirror adjustments, which is over here, which is a little hard to move because your knees sometimes can block it. So I wish they put it somewhere here, like the Innova, where it's easier to toggle. And these mirrors are not automatic, they're manual, so you'd have to push them to the side accordingly. And those are all the buttons that you have in this car. Alrighty, ah, okay, let's talk about rear. Now, I'm six foot tall. I think 6.1 and um, I was sitting in front here and that's my um, seat configuration in front now you can see over here my knees are touching the front and my head is touching the ceiling so I'm occupying a lot of space clearly uh, well technically this car should be able to fit three people in the back but comfortably two people are enough there is no armrest here in the center however once again we have a cup holder 
But the thing about this cup holder is you only have one cup holder in the back and two in front. So not only when a person calls shotgun in the car that they have to call shotgun to what seat they want to sit in, but also if they have a drink, they need to call shotgun and who's going to take the cup holder in the back if there are four people sitting here. Now with regards to leg room, it seems decent enough. I am comfortable. I'm not like having any sort of discomfort. I think my back is straight enough. It's just uh, my knees are touching the front, but it depends who's driving and what their seat configuration is in front. It's straight to the point, as I always say, and there's stitching over here on the sides of the car, but it's just an angular stitch look. But when you touch it, it's basically plastic. And the same design goes in the front as well. You have these guys over here just to hold, which a lot of people like to use just to you know, in case someone in front is driving too much, too fast with this car, which I don't know if it's meant for that, but you'll know from the drive experience later on. All right, now driving the 1.3 automatic Vios. Now, always guys, make sure you're wearing your seatbelt. I've already attached it. Now, the first thing I noticed about this car is it's uh, rather low. Um, it definitely has uh, a possibility to get scratched on the humps, especially if a lot of people are sitting. And it depends also what kind of humps you're going across. Now, um, the engine has a rather odd sound. It's not your typical engine roar, but I think that's because it's a 1.3 liter engine that makes that happen. So as I'm going across a hump right now, it's actually smooth. Um, there's not much outside noise as well, but it could be better in terms of insulation in totality. The side mirrors seem to be big enough for me to view things and also the rear view mirror. However, I feel like we could attach an uh, extension on the rear view mirror for uh, a wider angle view. So as I'm pressing the gas, It's what you get for a 1.3 liter engine. I mean, as I mentioned a while ago in the video, this is um, this, this has 122 newton meters of torque. So of course it's not turbo and it's a single VVTi compared to the dual, which has a higher horsepower as well. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this car onto the highway and give it a floor um, so that we can get the full feel of it and see how the powertrain works at specifically 4,400 RPM, I wanna feel how the car pulls. Because if this is an A to B car, this is definitely okay to drive with, no issues there. But if we get more into the mountains and long distance drives, then that's a factor to consider. So now, I'm on the highway. We always have to be careful. And flooring it now. I hit 44,000. 4,400 RPM, and it's decent. Uh, you don't really feel any pull. You can hear the sound of the engine roar, but um, it's just it's just what you expect it to be, a 1.3 liter. I think it's a very good day-to-day -day car, and you won't have much concerns with that. And you've got to manage your expectations as well when you get a car like this. Is it fun to drive? Not exactly, but is it practical to drive? Yes. Now let's talk about gas consumption. This car ranges anywhere between seven kilometers per liter to 12 kilometers per liter. The dual VVTi, however, ranges from nine kilometers per liter all the way up to 15 kilometers per liter. So that's something to consider. And of course that's referring specifically to the 1.3 variant while the 1.5 would have different configurations. Now, the thing about this is that a lot of people say it takes up a lot of gas, but I'm rather surprised that a lot of taxis use it. However, they usually use the manual transmission one. Now, with regards to the automatic one, yes, it could be a bit of a gas guzzler. I mean, imagine seven kilometers per liter would be too much, and it's a naturally aspirated engine as well, so that's a factor to consider because there is no turbo, so there's no turbo lag in this car. It's just straight to the point. Not like, of course, the naturally aspirated of a Porsche, but as simple as, this, as it is to say, this car offers you the practicality that you need. And it does not require any more than that. Because for the price point of this car, it ranges from 700,000 up. It's a good deal. And it does the job very well. So thank you so much for watching, guys. And please like and subscribe. You have no idea how long way that goes. And right now, we are going to hop on 
to our civilian review. Oh yeah, by the way, Samir, what watch are you wearing? Oh right, my watch. Speaking of watches, guys, we're watch fans over here. And right now I am wearing the Hamilton Khaki Field Mechanical Watch, which is an iconic piece of its time that basically offered the US military watches by Hamilton during World War, which this watch is a watch that is tough built, just like this car, which is a tough built car. All right, I got kidnapped again, but this time it's to review the Superman Vios. All right, first impressions. So I don't really, I don't, you know, he's, he's, uh, my kidnapper is trying to humor me so that I don't really think about the fact that I'm getting kidnapped. But anyways, so usually I don't really drive sedans. Most of the time I drive the, uh, I drive an MPV, which is a Nova. So if you want to check out a review on that, specific, uh, specifically 2017 version, you can go check that out here. Anyways, so right now it feels, it's a lot tighter than what I'm used to, but it definitely feels manageable. And compared to the Innova, the steering wheel is a lot lighter, like so much lighter. So really you could take your pinky and just drive around like this. Not too much pressure in the pinky and I'm still swerving left to right and people might think I'm drunk, but I'm actually just testing the steering wheel. Um, impressions of the acceleration. So, so far it, it takes a little bit for it to pick up. Like, you know, you really have to like kind of put your foot into it. But bad you know it kicks in you know it's trying its best you know I mean it's 1.3 liters so you can't really expect too much of it power wise but for its power to weight ratio it's a pretty good mix it's good enough for getting around it's good enough for even like long out-of-town trips as long as you don't go to the really hilly routes because you know you might really destroy your car in the process of going through the hilly routes anyways it's time for today's orthopedic check so all right now that I'm bringing this up, you're probably straightening your back and rolling your shoulders back, so you're welcome. Anyways, so seats-wise, these seats feel very, very comfortable. You know, they're not too, they're not really, you know, when you look at them at first, you don't really expect much, because you just see, you know, seat with normal padding in the back, and that's pretty much it. But it's actually pretty much well-suited for lots of body types, whether you're skinny or you're bigger, you know, it feels like it's just the seat that's for you. You know, it's not really the best seat, but it's a great seat nonetheless. And for the brakes, it actually bites pretty early. It's not like heavier cars where you have to really put your foot down a bit just to get yourself to stop. This one, you can just do it with a light toe tap and like, see, I'm stopped right before the hump. And that's a really good thing, like in terms of the overall endurance of your foot during driving even though you're driving a manual of course your your foot gets tired from going up and down especially when you have that additional pressure but this one um this whole setup it feels a lot easier to deal with you know you can just gas and go and break without really having to exert too much effort on your feet overall it's a great car. I mean, you can't really complain about it. It's not like you buy a Vios just to get like a sports car kind of feel, right? VSA, don't freaking rock. Don't, don't, I can't say that word. But anyways, I just censored that. Yeah. You, please don't rocket bunny your Vios, okay? I, I I respect individuality, but rocket bunnying your Vios just doesn't make sense, okay? Anyways. To each their own. <laughs> to each their own. But, you know. At least, like, let's practice a little bit of taste. I mean, can't really take my word for it. My car is, like, mishmashed with different shades of gray, and it's really, like, scratchy paint. But let's be responsible car owners here. Let's make, you know, let's make tasteful builds. Anyways, now that we're going through another tight section of the city, my first impression is that I don't have to worry at all. So, because of the VS's size, it's pretty much built for places like you know, Manila, where the roads are tight and you don't know which cars are coming which your way. Which makes it a perfect candidate in case you want a really reliable daily driver that's easy to deal with. 
anyways would i recommend you get a vios i don't know that's your personal preference you want a vios or not that's it's your life it's, it's not me it's not mine to dictate but i do definitely recommend getting it should definitely give it a try maybe you'll find it you know something that's perfectly suited for your taste anyways my job's done according to my kidnapper and now it's time for me to hop out